Hi, energy is present all around us in different forms though. Each of these is very interesting, but today let's stick to sound. <laughs> Look at this girl. What is her hair all excited about, huh? Are they moving because of the sound? But didn't we just say that ears detect sound? Then why is her hair responding to sound? This is because sound is a form of mechanical energy. That is, it is moving the air near her, which in turn is messing her hair up. In science, sound is defined as a vibration, simply a push and a pull at regular intervals, traveling through medium to ensure that our ears can make sense of it. I'm flapping my hand, but do you hear anything? No, because this isn't producing sound. Whereas if I hit pins on this particular instrument, it produces a sweet sound. So why is it that a flapping in my hands could not create a sound, whereas striking a pin could? If you observe closely, the pin was moving really fast, much, much, much faster than my hand. How do we measure this? That's fairly easy. Just check how many times it moves back and forth in a second. Or as we say in science, how many times does it oscillate in a second? Let's see what happens in this guitar if the number of oscillations per second, commonly called the frequency, increases. Baby, 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 oh! Not that song. So clearly, more oscillations per second, or you can say, more the frequency is, the higher the pitch. That was too high. That was too low. That doesn't matter. So we discovered just now that we can change the pitch by changing the frequency where the sound is produced. But how do we make it louder or softer? Let's get the Indian guitarist back. As you can see, if he plugs these strings softly, it sounds mild, but if he plugs harder, it gets louder. Since we are in India right now, let me show you an Indian percussion instrument called the tabla. The harder you hit, the louder it gets because the membrane is moving more. Our ancestors have given us a name for the extent of this movement. It's called amplitude. So we discovered that more the amplitude, more is the loudness. But wait, we've only talked about how sound is produced. But how does that vibration travel to our ears? Look, these vibrations are just pushing the air molecules, right? The first one gets pushed by the vibrating object. But why should the first air molecule push the others? Bingo, correct. Because the molecules are bonded together. Difficult to visualize? No worries. Here I have a setup to replicate what happens with molecules. I've taken these straws and sandwiched them between the sticky tape like molecules are bonded together. So now the straws behave like molecules and the sticky tape behaves like the bonding between them. Now let's try to see what happens if I start vibrating one of the molecules, the first molecule in fact. So here I strike the first molecule and you can see that the vibration then continues through all the straws or all the molecules. Now do you think that the vibration would have traveled if these molecules were not bonded with the sticky tape? Exactly, it wouldn't. So bonding is the reason why the vibrations would travel through all the other molecules. Now let's try to see what happens if we change the bonds between the molecules. So here, since I'm holding it very tight, we can say that the bond or the bonding between the uh, molecules is very tight. But if I make it loose, now it behaves like gas, where the molecules are freer to move as compared to what it was before. Mind you, in this case also they bonded together, just that they're freer to move. Now let's try to see what happens to the speed of, or, or the time, how long does it take for the vibration to travel from one molecule to the other molecule. So here suppose I keep it like what it would be in liquid. And I hit it first, start, stop, start, stop. All right, this is how long it took. Now let's make it air, very free to move. And let's try to see how long it's going to take now. Start, stop. Start, stop, start, stop. This is how long it took. Let's make it solid, very tight. And the molecules are not freer to move now. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. So it gets funny that way, but you can see that in molecule, the sound could travel much, much faster because the bonding between them was really tight. So now we know how sound is produced, how it travels to our ears, and how our ears distinguish between different sounds. So let's make some sound. Yeah. 